welcome to the new lecture video in theory of computation in previous lecture video we have studied the introduction of theory of computation in this lecture video we will discuss about some of the basic terms that are widely used throughout this course so let's get started first symbol a symbol is anything like letters a b c so on digits 0 1 2 so on bits 0 1 maybe some special characters like hash dollar plus minus asterisk etc next alphabet it is a finite non empty set of symbols and is denoted by symbol sigma for example sigma equals to 0 comma 1 similarly sigma may be a comma b comma c similarly sigma may be plus minus 0 1 and etc these are some of the examples of alphabets next string generally denoted by w it is a finite sequence of symbols taken from the alphabet for example if the alphabet is 0 and 1 then the string composed from this alphabets are 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 and so on similarly if the alphabet is a comma b comma c then the string composed from this alphabet are a b c similarly a b a a b b a b a b and so on and the next one is length of string denoted by this the length of the string refers to the number of symbols used in the string for example if the given alphabet is 0 and 1 and the string is 0 1 1 0 then the length of this string is the number of symbols that are used to build this string that is 1 2 3 4 so the length of this string is 4 but if alphabet is 0 1 and 1 comma 0 then the length of this string is this is one symbol and this is another symbol so this whole is count as one and this whole is count as another so the length of this string in that case is 2 next empty string which is denoted by epsilon it is a string having length 0 that is modulus of w equals to 0 next power of alphabet denoted by sigma power k it is a set of all strings having length k for example if sigma equals to 0 comma 1 and if we have to calculate sigma power 1 then it denotes the set of all string that is composed from this 0 and 1 and having length 1 so sigma power 1 equals to 0 comma 1 since these are only the two strings that have the length 1 and composed from this either 0 or 1 
Similarly, if we have to compute sigma power 2, then we have to find the set of strings that is composed from these two symbols and having length 2. So, one string is 0, 0, 0, 1. Similarly, 1, 0, comma, 1, 1. Similarly, if we have to compute sigma power 3, then we have to find the all the strings that is composed from this 0 and 1 and having length 3. So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on. Clean closure denoted by sigma power star. It includes set of all strings composed from alphabet sigma. That means it includes a string having having any length. For example, if sigma equals to 0 comma 1 then sigma star equals to strings having any length and composed from 0 comma 1 that means epsilon since it is the string having length 0 similarly 0 this is the string having length 1 and composed of symbol 0 similarly the string 1 which is also a string of length 0 and composed from symbol 1 and similarly the strings having length 2 is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 now the tones of string having length 3 that is 0 0 0 0 0 1 and so on and now the tones of a string having length 4 that is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 and so on comma write the string having any length composed from 0 and 1 2 we can also write sigma power star equals to sigma power 0 which is nothing the string of having length 0 union sigma 1 power 1 which is a string of having length 1 union sigma to the power 2 which is a string of having length 2 union sigma power 3 strings of having length 3 and so on remember sigma star always contains epsilon since it is the string having length 0 now the next term is positive closure which is denoted by sigma power plus it includes all strings composed from the alphabet except epsilon that means it includes all the strings having any length except length 0 so we can write sigma plus equals to sigma 1 union sigma power 2 union sigma power 3 union sigma power 4 union so on so here notice that here sigma power 0 is excluded that is epsilon is not included now the language it is a set of all strings 
that satisfies the given conditions and is generally denoted by L. For example, if L equals to the set of all strings over the alphabet 0 and 1 having and ends with 1, this one is one language and the set of strings that includes in this language are one since it is a string that is composed from the symbol one and ends with one similarly zero one since it is also a string that is composed from the symbol zero and one and have one in its end similarly zero zero one one zero one 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 and so on so let's take an another example of language suppose language l denotes all strings over the alphabet a b that starts and ends with same symbol in this case the set of strings are 0 sin it starts with 0 and ends with 0 and composed from the symbol 0 similarly 1 since it starts and ends with the same symbol similarly 0 0 since it starts with 0 and also ends with 0 similarly 1 1 and 0 1 0 since it starts and ends with 0 0 1 1 1 since it also starts with 1 and ends with 1 similarly 1 0 0 0 1 and so on now on the basis of this definition of language let's define the English language this English language is nothing it's just a string over the alphabet Sigma equals to that is in our English language the the alphabets are a B C D so on up to Z similarly capital letters a B C D so on up to Z it also includes digits right and special symbols like plus minus hashtag and it also includes other symbols here this string means words or sentences of the English languages concatenation of strings it is the process of combining strings let us suppose if there are two strings x and y and their concatenation denoted by x y consist of symbols of x followed by y for example if x equals to 1 0 0 and 0 and y equals to 0 1 0 1 then the, their concatenation denoted by x y equals to symbol of x followed by symbols of y that means 1 0 0 1 0 then symbols of y that is 0 1 0 1 suffix of string a string s is called suffix of string w if it is obtained by removing 0 
or more leading symbols of W. For example, if W equals to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, then its suffixes are, if we remove this symbol, leading symbol, then we get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. This one is the suffix of this whole string W. And similarly, if we remove these two symbols, then we get 0, 0, 0, 1. And if we remove first three symbols, then we get 0, 0, 1. So if we do not remove any symbols, then we will get the same string 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 which is also a suffix of the prefix of a string. A string, yes, is said to be a prefix of a string w if it is obtained by removing zero or more trailing symbols of, for example, if w equals to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, if we remove this trailing symbol, that is 1, then the resulting substring, that is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, is a prefix of this string. Similarly, if we remove these two trailing symbols, then we get 0, 1, 0, 0, which is also a prefix of the string W. Remember that we have to remove only consecutive trailing symbols. We cannot remove this one and this 0 so that the string, after removing these two symbols, 0, 0, 0, 1 as the prefix of of a string W. This is not a prefix of a string W. Okay? Substring. A string S is said to be a substring of W if it is obtained by removing zero or more trailing or leading symbols of W. For example, let us suppose W equals to zero one zero 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 one zero zero. If we remove this leading symbols and this trailing symbols, then we get the string 0, 0, 0, which is a substring of this string. Similarly, if we remove these consecutive leading symbols and only these two symbols, then the resulting string, that is 0, 0, 1, is also a substring of given string dog. Here also we cannot remove these two symbols and these two symbols and considered this string 0, 1, 0, 1 as a substring. This is wrong. We can only remove either the consecutive leading symbols or consecutive trailing symbols or both. That's all in this lecture video. If you have any queries or questions related to theory of computations, you may ask by commenting in the comment section of related videos and I will try to give the answer. Please don't forget to subscribe and share this channel. Hope to see you in next lecture video. Thank you.